I am Dimitris Vulgaris, and for the last seven weeks I have been working here at Barcelona Supercomputing Center as participant of PRA Summer of HPC. So why don't we start by giving a short introduction to the basics of memory subsystems? Memory architecture describes the methods used to implement computer data storage in the best possible manner. Traditionally, and from a quite high point of view, a memory system is nothing more than a cache and a RAM memory. Caches are very specialized and hence complicated pieces of hardware placed in a hierarchical way very close to the processing unit. They are always divided in layers. Now, depending on the layer it belongs to, every cache presents different characteristics regarding size and data latency retrieval. Cache size can vary from a few kilobytes to a few megabytes, depending on the layer. Moving on to RAM memory. This is an equally complex piece of hardware with significantly bigger capacity that is used as the main storage unit of the system. Applications shall look for the data they want to access, starting from a module which is the closest to CPU. But let's see how this is happening by presenting an example. Say that CPU issues an instruction in order to access variable X. First thing that needs to happen is to determine the variable's location in the system. You'll think that, of course, this variable resides in the RAM memory. And you'd be correct, since it is the main storage system. But what if the same variable had been accessed just previously? Then, most probably, a copy of it could be found in one of the cache layers. Since they're topologically closer to CPU, they have much, much shorter times. So, it would make sense to say that they are the first place to look for when a memory access is requested. But it is obvious that all data cannot fit in these fast memories. And here is when things take a turn for the worse. In case of a last-level cache miss, the system is made to access the slow DRAM memory in order to fulfill its need for data. To spice it up a little, think of the current shift towards big data. Dozens of data require processing, and of course they cannot all be stored in the small yet rapid caches. So far, the efforts of optimizing performance have been focusing in increasing CPU speed and parallelism. We have to admit that they do seem to bear fruits, however, mainly for one class of applications, those that depend on computation. When it comes to applications with heavy memory interaction workloads, then those changes do not seem that effective. That is why we have to redefine the traditional memory architecture and make it more efficient. There are plenty of exotic memory subsystems. They have completely or just partially diverse hardware architecture and varied access time, yet they are mainly software controlled and placed in an equal manner in the same level as RAM. That means that we, as programmers, can be responsible of deciding which data is going to be placed in which system. How are we to take such decisions, however? Here is where application profiling comes into play. We can again divide into software and hardware approach, but for the moment, let us stick to the first one. There is an abundance of tools that provide software profiling assistance, open source or private. What all of them do is instrument the under test application in order to extract performance leaping details, giving to the programmer the chance of optimizing them. In our project, we opted for Valgrind. Valgrind offers the possibility of simulating cache behavior, that is, when we run our application under Valgrind, all data accesses are monitored and collected, giving a chance of determining all those accesses that missed cache and had to deploy memory subsystems deeper in the hierarchy. Remember that these accesses are the performance limiting ones. I have referred to access data plenty of times, but what do I mean by data and how do we distinguish them? This is exactly where EVOP intervenes in order to group data into memory objects. An object can be an array of integers, a struct, or any other structure, the semantics of which suggests that it has to be considered as an entity. Such objects are labeled and every time an access happens, it is related to the object that had been accessed. All the previously described process seems, however, a bit computationally intense, doesn't it? Indeed, instrumenting an application will make it from 4 to 20 times slower. You can imagine what that means for programs with already long execution time. In order to alleviate this fact, we decided to restrict the instrumentation only to the regions of code that are of interest. Thankfully, Valgrind offers that possibility. What, however, is not provided by the tool is the chance to perform a sample collection of memory accesses rather than a complete one. By that, I mean that it would be interesting to find out if by intercepting one out of ten, let's say, accesses, we will have the same object discovery. In order to answer that, we have to keep in mind that the total access number is the sum of accesses of different objects, and also, at any given moment, a different object is accessed. So, so, it becomes clear that the sampling period can, and most probably will, result in discovery of more or fewer objects. But why should we care about the discovered objects and how often they are referenced? In order to answer that question, we have to make a summary of the procedure we followed in order to finally speed up our application. The first step would be to run it under Valgrind. This will give us a list of discovered objects. Every one of them has been referenced several times. Some of these times, the requested values were residing in the cache memory, causing no trouble, of course. Some others, however, slower memories had to be accessed. Depending on the last level cache misses of each object, we are able to determine the most performance limiting ones. In the meantime, we have already defined our heterogeneous memory system and we can place the objects to the most suitable for them subsystem in order to maximize the final speedup. This process of object placement takes into consideration the size of each unique subsystem as well as the size of each object. It also considers the access number and the last level cache misses of each one of the latter and decides an optimal distribution. So far, I've been mentioning the word application as if it were a black box. It is about time to open that box, don't you think? During my experimentation, I found out a really interesting correlation between the access pattern of the application and the maximum sampling period that results in reasonable speedup. In particular, our test cases were two applications with different memory behavior. The first one presents an almost sequential access pattern by referring to different objects for every part of its execution time, while the second one has an iterative behavior, accessing the same objects over and over. 
you can definitely imagine how this affects the sampling period spectrum that can be applied. In graphs, you can see a qualitative representation of the abstract rate of some objects as the program is executed. In the first case, if we sample too sparsely as the red line indicates, we'll miss many objects. Shorter periods, such as black dotted lines, are required. In the second case, however, sparse sampling is enough to account for most of the objects as they keep being referenced while the application executes. Indeed, the experimental procedure verifies what has been previously explained. As you can see, in the first case, only a relatively short sampling period can result in important speedup, while in the second case, we're allowed to experiment with sampling periods that are significantly higher and yet get efficient results. When our workflow is completed, an overall 10% and 12% speedup respectively, is achieved. To sum it up, I would like to emphasize that our sampling mechanism aims in enable the comparison between the software and hardware approaches. Since, by default, hardware profiling entails a form of sampling, we have provided a chance of imitating this behavior through a software technique. This way, we can investigate whether these two sides of the same coin are actually identical or completely different, whether we can get similar speedup by employing different approaches. This remains only to be seen.